I'm back and back with another video really good one this is gonna be a really good one so make sure to stay till the end because I'm gonna talk about M1 iPad Pro one week later but the things that I didn't say in my first impressions and unboxing video which I will link in the description which was still pretty a good video but this one I have some interesting conclusions about the M1 iPad Pro one week later specifically the 11 inch model I think that there are some good points that will give you great value if you are considering this iPad Pro for your next buy or generally if you are thinking about the iPad Pro for yourself. And the first thing I want to talk about is that geez this thing offers great value. I mean just think about it. People talk a lot of crap about this product like if you have the 2018 or 2020 iPad Pro just don't get this one. It's not good whatever but the truth is that okay 2018 and 2020 iPad Pros are extremely capable but not everybody has those and if you actually look at this 11 inch model for what it actually is you will realize that it is a great upgrade and I'm talking specifically about the 11 inch version I'm gonna touch upon a little bit 12.9 inch but right now I'm talking about 11 inch and this is a great upgrade like for the same price instead of the uh, quite getting older A12Z processor you're getting the newest M1 that puts you even further with the performance lead you are getting more RAM, better cameras, Thunderbolt port and overall newer device for the same price which is like such a good value in my opinion and yet there is a lot of criticism toward iPad OS well deserved definitely well deserved but the truth is that the 11 inch model for what it is it's actually pretty good it didn't get any price bump like 12.9 inch that you know now costs even more and isn't really more capable but the 11 inch still costs like 800 US bucks and it offers pretty good value. And why exactly does it offer pretty good value? I mean, this is a stupid comparison, but for the sake of comparison, just take a look at this. iPhone 12, 128 gigabytes costs like $880. And this thing just costs you 800 bucks for the same amount of storage and just compare the things that you have on the iPad Pro and on the iPhone. I know this is a stupid comparison but in terms of strictly capabilities, the things that you can do on an iPad and the things that this device has, like much better processor, like you don't like notches on iPhones, you don't have it here. You want 120Hz on the Pro models for like thousand dollars, you do have it with this $800 iPad Pro. You want a USB-C? Hello, you have a Thunderbolt port here. So like already more capabilities, plus the processor is faster and the iPad OS is still more capable than iOS with like multitasking and all of those things put together. And again, this is not for the sake of comparing iPhone to the iPad, but if you actually look at the price, this M1 flagship iPad Pro 11 inch is still cheaper than the iPhone 12. It's even cheaper than the base iPhone 12 model, 64 gigabytes. And if you actually take a look at the capabilities, like they are really, really big, despite the obvious limitations of iPad OS. And yeah, speaking about that 11 inch model, like this is such a good size for like literally just everything. Like you wanna do some multitasking here, you do have that capabilities, since this iPad is just pretty okay for multitasking. Like this is not a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. But like for what it is, it's pretty good. The size for watching any videos, gaming, being portable and again multitasking, typing, drawing, it's a pretty perfect size. And the thing about this 11 inch iPad Pro is that it's something between, more than a tablet but less, a bit less than a laptop since it doesn't have full capabilities. But for the price and for the size, like this device is extremely capable and the size just is pretty comfortable for carrying, for typing, for drawing, gaming, for whatever you want to do on this thing. It's even capable to do some nice multitasking, of course within boundaries of iPad OS, but still the size is pretty good and all of that for 800 bucks. Yeah, it's still expensive, but like for the capabilities, this device is pretty well balanced in my opinion and pretty well priced. So I really can't complain about this whatsoever. 
and again it doesn't have the full capabilities of a laptop so you don't pay like eleven hundred dollars for the base 12.9 inch model you pay 800 bucks here for the extended capabilities of a regular tablet that actually can do a lot any creative work and as i said drawing entertainment all of these things this can do it still won't be able to do like coding like now with ipod s15 it may be changing a little bit but still it's not fully capable device like a laptop is but for the price and for the capabilities it offers it is still a great value and as i said you don't pay extra 300 bucks just for a little bit deeper blacks on a bigger model so like the 11 inch for what it offers for the size and for the price is i think a pretty good value and really a solid pick and last but not least is the fact that this 11 inch ipad pro actually any ipad pro right now but specifically the m1 11 inch ipad pro just offers such a full capabilities and full package for the price like think about it you don't have 120 hertz on iphone it has it here it's still a great display even though it's an lcd liquid retina lcd not xdr still the regular lcd but it's pretty good it even supports some form of hdr since the brightness is higher than on the regular ipads so yeah it's not full hdr but it does support it it has great power uh, it's gonna get updated for years a lot of ram great speakers as i said iphones don't have usb-c this thing has thunderbolt so come on it has decent amount of base storage it has even decent cameras and microphones and i know what you're gonna say like cameras and microphones who really cares about that but that just proves the complete package and again there are some people who just want to work over one device and you know there are people who are gonna say you are not gonna take photos on a tablet maybe some people are gonna do that maybe some people are gonna use that lighter you do have that capability here and if you are for example starting on youtube and want to record a video with this ipad like you do have that capability since this thing records 4k 60 it has decent microphones this is the audio and video from the ultra wide camera on the new ipad pro and as you see it's actually doable looks stupid but it's kind of doable. It has great power and capabilities to edit and upload this video. So like it's really capable device with pretty much a complete package. Yeah, limited OS, but still a complete hardware package for $800. And on top of that, if you are still not satisfied, you can get Apple Pencil or any other stylus that's gonna be compatible with this thing and draw on it. You can get Magic Keyboard or any other keyboard or mouse and actually make it kind of a laptop experience out of this and actually be pretty productive and do a lot of things so yeah this is a great complete package especially for the price and as i said and will say it again it offers some of the things that iphones still don't have like the first ipad pro with promotion display 120 hertz was introduced in 2017 and iphones in 2021 still don't have 120 hertz and same story goes for USB-C, introduced in 2018 with the 2018 iPad Pro. iPhones still don't have it and aren't very likely to have it. And again, uh, iPad Pro never had notch or anything like that. So overall, it just emphasized the fact that it's a pretty complete experience when it comes to this model. And that is the main thought of this video, especially considering that 11 inch M1 iPad Pro that Despite the fact that, that there is 2018 and 2020 iPad Pro, you do have upgraded specs and a great model for the same price that offers you full capabilities, that has great size. Uh, the software still, it needs to get a little bit better, but it's still okay. Hey, it has its limitations. I'm not gonna ignore that. And the things that I was complaining about, they are still there. But it's getting better and it's gonna get better just like the 2018 ipad pro got better with like ipad os 13 upgrade and as the years were going by it's a better device right now than it was like three years ago so same with this ipad and like those core points the fact that you get such a good value for the money the the capabilities of this product that it's a great upgrade compared to the previous models and the fact that it's still super capable and with the fact that it has everything you want to have like literally every specs you want to have here you just have with this device and one week later it, it's becoming more and more apparent for me and 
yeah, my impressions are really positive. As I said, they are not perfect, since iPadOS is far from perfect. But like here, you do have everything. You have great power, great screen, great speakers, cameras, microphones, ports, even the battery life is pretty decent. I mean, like with the new MacBooks that can last like 18 hours or 15 hours, the 10, 11 hours on here aren't that impressive. But still, for what it offers, it's a great device. And one week later, my mind hasn't changed. As a matter of fact, I like this device even more. And if you like this video, make sure to press the like button and if this video provides you any value or maybe you just want to see some more of the M1 iPad Pro, some productivity stuff, gaming stuff and much more, then maybe make sure to subscribe and hopefully until next time, until next video, be sure to be well and peace.